So what if I told you that wings in this configuration, this wing made more downforce. But moving the wings to this configuration, this wing makes more downforce. So that's the advantage of wing setback and we're going to get into it in this video. Welcome back to the channel everybody. Today's video is going to be all about wing setback, the simple math to figure it out and the advantages of all of that. So wing setback, we're going to draw a quick little car. So wing setback is the reference line of how far back your wing is. Most road racing classes have some sort of rule about how far rearward your wing can go. So I did all this math earlier and effectively where your wing is multiplies the leverage of the downforce created on your rear wheels. So the, the formula is pretty simple. It's force times length. Got all my notes just because I'm not that smart. Um, has to equal out to x, which we'll get into a second, times weight. So we were at the wind tunnel not too long ago, and we're actually going to use some real world numbers. And I don't want to phrase this. If you were to swap out wings, and let's say it went from 200 pounds to 250 pounds, most people would think, oh, the, the wing makes 250 pounds, but it really doesn't. So what we need to do is figure out the leverage ratio, because in the wind tunnel, you're measuring the force on the wheels, not on the wing. So if we get a wind tunnel number of, let's say, 100 uh, where do I want to put this? Let's say we get a wind tunnel number of 125 pounds on the wheel. We can use a simple third class lever calculation to figure out how much the wing is making. So in a third class level, in a third class lever, uh, for simple math, the car was an E36. Uh, I honestly don't know the exact wheelbase, but for simple math, we're going to use 100 inches. So wheelbase is 100, and that is our X. Setback would be effectively the center of pressure on the wing. We'll say is 24, which from this distance is our L. Weight, we'll put it in the wheel because the weight is what is effectively measured in the wind tunnel. And force will be what the wing actually produces. So if we plug these into this equation up here, so we're solving for F, F times L, which would be this plus this, it's 124, equals X, so that's 100 times W, which was, you know, I think I erased it, 125. So these numbers are all kind of similar, so that's why the math is a little bit easy. So this math is easy, 12,500. If you're decent at math, you know you can just divide this by 124. So F equals 12,500 divided by the 124 and you end up with 100.8, so we'll call it 101. So F equals 101. So the wing is effectively only making about 100 pounds, but you can see that measured in the wind tunnel, it's seeing 125 pounds. So what we're gonna do is, let's erase this, let's start over. Now that we know the force is 101, is what the wing makes at that angle. Let's say this was 36 inches. So effectively what, what we're going to do is move this wing back a foot. So let's say 
you know, your class rules allow you to go, oops, you know, something like this. Put the wing way back here. So if we replug in the numbers, but now we want to solve for the weight on the wheels. So we now know F, oops, so what is that? 101 times 136 equals 100, which is the wheelbase, and we're solving for weight. So 101 times 136 equals 13,736. E divided by 100 equals the weight. Just move it, move your decimal for the 100. So, uh, so W equals 137.36 pounds. So we went from, what was it, 125 pounds to 137 pounds. So 125, oops, 125 uh, to 136, I'm sorry, 137. So 125 up to 137 is an increase of 9.6% extra downforce just by moving your wing rearwards. So almost a 10% gain in where you move your wing. So that brings us back to the very beginning scene of the video. Even though the smaller wing, because it was shorter when it was moved forward in the wind tunnel, we saw it was only like a pound less at the wheels calculated for even setback. A wing that is 20% smaller outperformed a larger wing. So, at this point, I'm sure some of you guys are saying, you know, if you end up putting your wing all the way back here, any downforce made behind the rear axle will be seen as a lift at the front axle. So you gotta keep that in mind. So let's say you end up moving your wing rearward, but you still only need, let's say, let's just make it an even 100 pounds. So now let's say you only need 100 pounds of downforce on the wheels or on the rear axle to keep the car balanced. Now what we need to do is solve for the force again. So again, going back up to our formula. So we're going to solve for F. Length is 136. X is 100 times weight. Let's say we only need 100. So this one should be 10,000 divided by 136 will give us our F. So F equals 73.5 pounds. So in order to see 100 pounds on the wheel, or on the axle, the wing only needs to make 73.5 pounds. So what does that allow you to do? That allows you to take angle out of the wing and anytime you take angle out of a wing, you make less drag. So there's two ways of looking at it. Moving it back gives you more downforce if you need it, or moving it back and taking wing angle out of the car produces less drag. So that's the big benefit of wing setback. All right guys, so that's about it for this little intro to wing setback. You know, feel free to kind of plug in your own numbers. Uh, a lot of wings have CFD, um, so you can kind of you know, guess and get familiar with your own car. The next video, uh, or one of our next videos, is going to be a not all wings are created equal video going over wind tunnel data about why wings behave a certain way sometimes. So if you're interested in that, please hit that subscribe button down here. As always, guys, thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you in the next one.